Okay, so um, see we saw in the previous lecture that uh, using the implicit function theorem you know you can look at the locus of uh, uh, function of complex valued function of two complex variables uh, which is smooth as a Riemann surface ok. Now uh, what I am going to um, talk about in this and uh, in a probably the next lecture is trying to understand uh, what happens to uh, a function at what is called a critical point ok. So basically uh, what we have been looking at so far is uh, the relationship between uh, f <coughs> and an analytic mapping being a one to one mapping and uh, for example uh, the derivative non vanishing ok. So uh, what we have proved is uh, if you have an analytic mapping uh, if you have a analytic function which is uh, non which is one to one then we know that it is an isomorphism onto its image namely the inverse function is also uh, analytic it is holomorphic ok. And uh, on the other hand if the derivative of a function does not vanish at a point then there is a of course a neighbourhood by continuity there is a whole neighbourhood surrounding that point where the derivative will not vanish and what will happen is in that neighbourhood uh, the function will be uh, locally in uh, by holomorphic. So in other words for given every point in that neighbourhood uh, I, I can find a smaller neighbourhood where the function becomes one to one ok. So uh, now the question that we turn to is what happens when uh, the derivative uh, vanishes ok and uh, just as we have in functions of one variable the set of points uh, where the derivative vanishes. Uh, is called the critical set such points are called critical points and the function values at these points are called critical values ok. And we want to study the function or uh, the behavior of the function uh, at a critical point right. Now so let me so let me make the definitions uh, uh, let so uh, behavior at a critical point. So here is a so here is a definition. Let uh, f from d to c be uh, analytic uh, on a domain D D in the complex plane and. Uh, a point Z0 of D is called a critical point for F if F dash of uh, Z0 equal to 0 ok. So uh, it is simply a point where the derivative of the function vanishes and of course the derivative exists because the function is analytic of course you know if the function is analytic then it is infinitely differentiable ok. So derivatives of all orders exist and the condition for the critical for a point being a critical point is that the derivative must vanish alright and uh, the value w0 which is f of z0 is called uh, the critical value. called the critical value corresponding to uh, the critical point is it not ok and uh, so if you look at uh, is it not is it not is a 0 of f dash ok and uh, of course f dash is an analytic function 
okay and note that uh, you know uh, uh, of course I am uh, I am certainly not going to consider uh, a constant analytic function okay I am I am assuming that my analytic function f is non constant because had it been constant then the derivative will be identically 0 then so what happens is that it will uh, in that sense it will be you know uh, every point will be a critical point and uh, there will be only one critical value uh, namely uh, 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 the constant value of the function okay I am not considering that case okay. So I am considering a non constant analytic function so if I take a non constant analytic function then uh, uh, the uh, then f then if you look at f dash what happens to f dash uh, I am particularly interested in the case when f dash is also a non constant analytic function okay and uh, uh, of course you know uh, uh, if f has a critical point then f dash is uh, 0 at that critical point and uh, if f dash is a constant then it will tell you that f dash is identically 0 and that will tell you that f is constant therefore uh, you know f dash will be also a non constant analytic function okay if f is a non constant analytic function and uh, so if you look at this non constant analytic function f dash uh, z0 is a 0 of that and it has to be isolated you know the zeros of a non constant analytic function are isolated okay that means every 0 can be surrounded by a disc of finite radius where you cannot find any other zeros right so this uh, this z z0 is an isolated 0 of f dash and what this will tell you is that uh, the critical points are isolated okay so uh, the critical points of an analytic function are isolated points okay so that is the that is what I wanted to say and then uh, you can also define the order of the critical point to be simply the order of uh, the 0 uh, uh, z0 of f dash okay because after all z0 is a 0 uh, namely the critical point is a 0 of the derivative and you look at the order of that 0 and call that the order, order of the critical point okay. So, uh, so let me write that down uh, if f is if f is non constant so is f dash and hence uh, uh, of course if f is non constant and uh, f has a critical point then f, f dash is also uh, non constant uh, and hence uh, and hence uh, any critical point of f is isolated so the critical points are for an non constant analytic function are isolated okay uh, the order the order of the critical point of the critical point z0 of f is defined to be the order of the 0 of uh, uh, f dash mm. and z0 okay. So this is the definition of what a critical point is what a critical value is and the what is the order of a critical of or what is the order of a critical point okay now uh, the uh, of course you know if you take a point which is not a critical point all right if you take a point which is not a critical point then uh, you are taking a point where the derivative does not vanish okay and that case we have already studied where, where the derivative does not vanish uh, uh, if 
you take a point where the derivative does not vanish then there is a whole neighborhood surrounding that point where the derivative will not vanish because the derivative is continuous and then in that neighborhood you know sir at e given any point in that neighborhood you can find a small smaller disk where the function is one to one and uh, the function is invertible okay so you you can you can locally get an inverse but therefore what we want is we want to study the behavior of a function in neighborhood of uh, a critical point in a neighborhood of the point where the derivative is zero so the first thing i wanted to say is that you know that the technique of uh, studying this has always been uh, trying to look at only zeros okay the the whole theme of the lectures uh, that so far has been to look study only zeros of analytic functions okay that's our theme and uh, therefore you can see that uh, uh, even when i study a critical critical point i'm i'm studying the zero of an analytic function namely the zero of the derivative which also is an analytic function okay so uh, the, the so we want so let me write this down we want to study the behavior of f <coughs> uh in a neighborhood of uh, a critical point z not of order uh m minus m minus 1 okay so i'm choosing m minus 1 for a particular reason uh with with critical value uh with critical value uh f of z not is equal to w okay so uh so you see the what we do is why this m minus 1 is because we we'll instead of considering the function f of z if you consider f of z minus w not okay then what happens is the uh, the a critical point for a function will be the same as uh, for any other function which differs from the given function by a constant because when you take the derivative the constant is going to go away all right so if i consider the function f of z minus w not okay that function uh will still have z not as a critical point because its derivative will be the same as f dash of z and which will vanish at z not but the nice thing now is z not is also a zero of the original function uh of this of this of this function okay so uh note that uh z not is a zero of order m uh of f of z minus w not okay so uh so the method is that you uh you reduce everything to studying zeros of analytic functions right and of course you know we have studied <coughs> we have studied the uh Uh, in in all this uh, i am assuming that m is at least uh, uh, you know uh, two okay <coughs> note because it's a critical point z not is at least a simple zero of f dash okay so m should be at least two right uh so if you take f of z minus w not then z not is at least a zero of order 2 okay now <coughs> uh see the to to understand uh, what happens to uh, the mapping f in a neighborhood of the point z not okay uh, given this uh, condition we'll have to <coughs> we'll need to understand uh, few other concepts uh, uh 
uh, probably you have come across them in a first course in complex analysis I am not sure if you, if you have but anyway I will recall them. So these are to do with uh, looking at the Riemann surface corresponding to various branches uh, giving the inverse of a given function okay the, the so called uh, Riemann surface of a multi valued function as it is called okay. Of course I should uh, I should warn you that the uh, the, the terminology multi valued function is a is a misnomer in the sense that a function is not supposed to have uh, take several values okay a function by definition strictly is something that gives a well defined value for each value of the variable okay. So if it is multiple valued it is not a function okay but that is not what it means what it means is that you have several solutions to the inverse function. So uh, let me explain. Uh, let me explain uh, uh, the point of view that uh, when you try to write a function and write an inverse okay the problem is that you may have several inverses okay and uh, they will give you various so called branches of the function right and these branches will be different functions basically. But then if you want to think all of them as one and the same function okay then that is possible on what is called the Riemann surface of that inverse function okay. So I will explain that so uh, uh, so, so I let, 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 let me write this uh, let, let me write the title as the Riemann surface of uh, a multi valued function. Uh, giving inverses inverses to a given function so uh, so this is something that uh, that needs to be understood so i'll start with uh, so i'll uh, start with the sta the most uh, uh, two most basic examples the first one is uh, the logarithm which is the inverse to the exponential function okay and then I will uh, uh, look at uh, the power function uh, z going to z power m and uh, uh, why I am looking at the logarithm first is because uh, that is the source uh, if you understand uh, uh, that the logarithm has different branches and you understand how to define these branches then you can define branches for many other functions just using the logarithm for example for the power function and then why am I interested in the uh, power function I am interested in the power function because the final fact is that if you look at the mapping f of z in a neighborhood of z0 up to uh, change of coordinates it will behave exactly like the power function z going to z power m where uh, you know uh, where m is the same okay. So if you look at this uh, uh, if you look at this function in a neighborhood of z0 the behavior of this function will look like z going to z power m. So that is the reason I want to study z going to z power m and to study the inverse of z going to z power m okay which are the mth roots of the variable they are there are uh, you know m mth roots they are the branches okay and you get those branches from the logarithm the various branches of the logarithm okay. So uh, that is the uh, outline of what I am going to do so start with start with uh, f of z is uh, so let me not use f probably I will use g of z is equal to e power z the exponential function so uh, this is uh, this is an entire function the entire function uh, means uh, if you recall it is a function that is analytic on the whole plane okay it is defined on the whole plane and it is analytic on the whole plane and you know pretty well that uh, uh, the image of this function is the whole plane minus uh, the origin 
the only value that the exponential function does not take is the is, is the value 0 right and you know also pretty well that uh, uh, the inverse of this function is given by uh, a logarithm okay. So uh, you know how to write the logarithm if uh, z0 uh, if, if uh, z is x plus i y then you know that uh, we have you can define log z okay which is uh, you define it as uh, uh, half uh, natural logarithm of uh, x squared plus y squared uh, plus i into uh, argument of z uh, plus 2 and pi okay this is how you define the uh, logarithm of uh, uh, z if provided of course provided uh, z is not 0 okay. So probably I, I should uh, um, maybe change the notation um, let, let, let me do the following thing uh, so I want to think of an inverse function okay so I I would like to solve for e power z equal to omega okay uh, in that equation I would like to solve for z so I am thinking of e power z equal to w uh, let me call it w not omega so I have e power z equal to w I am trying to solve it for z as a function of w and what I will get is z equal to log w so I will change let me change everything to w so I will uh, the source complex variable z real part are real and imaginary parts are x and y the target complex variable is w I will put the real parts as u and v okay w is u plus iv so if I do that I will get something like this so log w uh, so I will get u squared plus v squared uh, and i argument of w plus 2 and pi uh, provided w is not 0 okay. So uh, the point is that uh, here the uh, uh, this argument of w is something that uh, 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 has many values okay the argument has many values and you get all the values by fixing one value of the argument and adding all possible uh, you know integral uh, all possible uh, integer multiples of 2 pi okay and this is the reason why you are uh, why you are getting uh, many inverses okay. So if you solve e power z equal to w then the solution is z equal to log w that is the inverse function alright and it has many values log w has many values the reason for so many values is because the argument of w is not uh, is not well defined it is defined only up to uh, a multiple of 2 pi okay. Uh, now so in some sense it is not correct to call this as the, as the inverse function okay because an inverse function should be unique but we can make this into a function so uh, so what do you do so this is the uh, this is the whole point we uh, we uh, define what is called a branch of the logarithm okay we define what is called a branch of the logarithm that gives you a single valued inverse function okay to the exponential function which is analytic okay and the fact is that this single valued inverse function will not be defined on the uh, target plane of course you know when I take the inverse function you see this the situation is like this I have the I have the complex plane here which is uh, the variable is z and then uh, I have the mapping uh, g of uh, z is equal to e power z equal to w and uh, well the uh, the image is in the w plane okay and uh, I am missing out uh, I will have I, I will miss out the origin because uh, e power z will not take the uh, value 0 so if at all I try to define uh, an inverse function uh, g inverse is log and you know let me let me put this in quotes 
let me put this in quotes why I am putting that in quotes is because you know there is no if you start with the non zero uh, value of w you do not get a unique value of the logarithm you get so many values of the logarithm okay you get several values of the logarithm. So uh, so you know the way it is is if I start with uh, if I start with the value say w uh, 1 let us say okay then I will get if I look at log w 1 alright I will get a uh, lot of values all the values will have the same real part which will be half ln mod w okay which is uh, which is uh, uh, say some uh, uh, some value here so this is this line this line is given by a uh, real part of z is equal to half ln mod w okay uh, maybe i should not write it's just ln mod w you should not write half ln because it is already uh, ln of mod w right and mm, and of course uh, what are the uh, what is what are the imaginary parts the imaginary the the imaginary uh, parts of this logarithm they all differ by uh, multiples of uh, uh, 2 pi so what's going to happen is well you're going to get you're going to get various you're going to get various points uh, uh you know uh so you know if if you if you if you have a point here then you will have you will have another point here and you will have another point here and so on and all these distances will be 2 pi you will get so many values So you will get uh, you will get so many values uh, all having the same real part all right namely ln mod w all right and uh, the but the imaginary parts will uh, differ by uh, every every successive point uh, two nearby points if you take uh, two logarithms uh, the imaginary uh, part will differ by 2 pi all right. So, in some sense, you know, the inverse mapping is trying to send W one to, uh, uh, of course, this is this should be W one ln mod W one. Okay. So the inverse mapping is trying to send W one to this uh, uh, all these points. So it's not a function. Okay, because I don't have a unique uh, value, I can't pick out a unique value from this. All right. Now. Uh, what we do is we do the following thing we try to define a map in this direction and of course on this side you will have to take c minus the origin okay you have to throw out the origin so which i'll i'll draw it like this i'll 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 put a put a circle here saying that uh, 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 the origin is thrown out okay and I will try to I can try to think of defining uh, a branch of the logarithm. Uh, so let me write this. Uh, so let me not even say branch now for the moment. Let me say uh, try to define uh, uh, log in this direction from the w plane to the z plane, right. Now, uh, the fact is that I there is no. Of course, I I'm trying to find define an inverse function to an analytic function, and I would like that also to be analytic. Okay, uh, I would like to define uh, any function that I would like to study is uh, something that I would like it uh, like to uh, something that certainly I would like of that function is that it should be analytic. All right. Now, which means in particular it has to be continuous. All right. Now the continuity itself forces that you cannot define it on this okay and uh, uh, so to explain that what we will do is 
we will we'll let us uh, cut out uh, the, uh, the negative real axis you it the, if you cut out the negative real axis uh, it is called this slit plane okay that means you throw out the line segment from minus infinity to uh, 0 including 0 okay. So, it is not possible to define it on uh, the punctured plane C minus origin, but it is possible to define it on a subset of that namely the slit plane and what is the slit plane? The slit plane is a plane minus the complex plane minus uh, the line segment from minus infinity to 0. So, this is the uh, interval on the real line thought of as a real axis extending from minus infinity to 0. So, that is the that is the shaded piece I am just three taking out this okay. So, uh, the the way to picture it is uh, that you know uh, you must think of uh, uh, this you must think of this line being cut okay and then what you do is you do the following thing you define uh, so let me define this so I will define for any w here all right I will define what is called the principal branch of the logarithm all right and the so called principal branch of the logarithm uh, uh, actually uh, depends on what is called as choosing a principal branch of the argument of w okay. So, what you do is you define log w principal branch principal branch of the logarithm of w to be uh, ln mod w plus i times principal argument uh, uh, of w and what is this principal argument of w the principal argument of w uh, is the argument that I will take from uh, it is it is the angle from minus pi to plus pi okay. But then uh, I throw out one of uh, these end points okay. So, probably I throw out uh, mm, I mean the uh, I wonder what the convention is uh, maybe I throw out uh, a plus pi okay so what you'll do is uh, so you put this condition where uh, minus pi less than or equal to argument of w strictly less than pi okay so you see see the uh, uh, what you must understand now is that uh, when i do this i i've when i when i write this i i've not thrown out uh, the uh, the negative real axis okay mind you the argument w the argument of a complex number is always defined for a non-zero complex number. So, this this argument is always defined on the punctured plane for any complex number any non-zero complex number you can define the argument. The only thing is the argument is ambiguous in the sense that you can add any multiple of 2 pi to it okay that is because as far as the angle is concerned adding 2 pi does not change the point on the plane all right. So, uh, well uh, so what you must understand is that this this is uh, uh, defined on the punctured plane okay, but the problem is it will fail to be continuous on the negative real axis because you know if you take a point uh, below the uh, negative real axis the argument will be close to minus pi okay but if you just push that point above the negative real axis and in fact it will it will exactly be equal to minus pi if it is a point on the negative real axis all right because I have taken minus pi to be the argument uh, uh, also as um, I have taken minus pi also to be one of the values okay. So, every point on the negative real axis has uh, argument minus pi and points below that will have arguments close to minus pi. But if you just go a little bit above the negative real axis the argument will be close to plus pi. So, you see there is a jump in the argument 
there is a jump in the argument which is uh, a jump of uh, 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 nearly 2 pi okay and it is this jump in the argument that prevents our this function from being a continuous function on the negative real axis and you know uh, if you think of log w as a function okay uh, and of course ambiguity was what argument to use suppose I use the principal argument okay to remove any ambiguity if I want this uh, I want this log to be a uh, an analytic function so I want it to be a continuous function alright and mind you if it is if it is continuous then both the real and imaginary parts should be also be continuous a, co a complex valued function is continuous if and only if it is real and imaginary parts considered as real valued functions are continuous alright therefore if you want this to be continuous then ln mod w and arg argument of w should both be continuous functions of course ln mod w will always be continuous okay because it is a natural it is the it is a natural uh, logarithm okay it is a real valued non negative real valued function there is no problem with this okay whereas the problem is with the argument as you can see because the argument is not going to be continuous on the negative real axis and that is the reason why why if I even though this function is defined on c-0 okay this principal logarithm as it is called which is defined using the principal branch of the argu argument uh, principal logarithm defined using principal argument uh, where uh, we usually use capital L and to show that it is the principal branch of the logarithm and capital A to say that it is the principal branch of the argument or principal argument. The point is that uh, this function even though it is defined on the punctured plane it is not continuous on the punctured plane to make it continuous you will have to cut out uh, the uh, you will have to cut out the uh, uh, the negative real axis okay you have to cut it out what that means is that uh, what is the advantage of cutting it out I mean cutting it out does not mean remove it in, re in, a, in a strict sense cutting it out means that you separate the portion of the uh, 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 you separate the portion above the negative real axis from the negative real axis and the portion below you you you, you separate them and why do you separate them you separate them because once you separate them you cannot move from here to there you cannot think of see what is the problem in this being continuous the problem in this being continuous is that I can take a point here and I can I can take a point which is uh, uh, on the negative real axis or slightly below the negative real axis uh, and then very easily push it to go above the negative real axis that is because the region above the negative real axis is close to the negative real axis and the region below it okay. Now by slitting the plane what I am doing is I am just making them far away okay therefore I will not have this I, I simply cannot push a point on the negative real axis or below the negative real axis to above the negative real axis that is because I have cut it I have purposely created a disconnection okay and once you look at the slit plane like this then you see that this becomes a continuous function because the only problem was continuity on the negative real axis. So it becomes a continuous function and the truth is it, it even becomes an analytic function okay this becomes an analytic function and uh, of course uh, uh, this function called a branch of the logarithm with the principal branch of the logarithm becomes an inverse function to the function e power set okay but mind you that the inverse function uh, as a function is defined on c-0 but as a continuous function can be defined only after you uh, uh, after you make the slit okay and then of course if you make the slit then it becomes not only continuous it is actually analytic alright and so you get uh, so the moral of the story is if I take this uh, function exponential function uh, even though the exp exponential function is not uh, 1 to 1 you know uh, because if I change if I to z if I add any multiple of 2 n pi i 
I will still get the same value when I apply the exponential so it is a many to one function. So obviously the if I take if I think of an inverse function the inverse function will be multiple valued in general we call this multiple valued function as log we call it as a logarithmic function but to make it a single valued function you have to take a branch of the logarithm that branch of the logarithm for example in this case is a principal branch is defined on the punctured plane but even though it is defined on the punctured plane it will not be continuous if you want to think of it as a continuous function then you have to slit the plane okay you will have to separate the re the the portion above the negative real axis from the negative real axis and the portion below it by making a slit okay and then if you consider this slit plane then this function becomes an analytic function and it becomes an inverse to this function in the sense that you apply this function then apply the exponential function you will get the identity map on the slit plane and this becomes a single valued function and it becomes analytic and it becomes really an inverse function to this. So the moral of the story is you are able to get an inverse function only after making a slit in the plane okay in fact this slit need not have been made here you can even may make it along a radial line okay only thing is uh, on whichever line you make it you you make the argument to you know vary from there to uh, uh, I mean you, you just it is just you rotate this uh, uh, this slit by whatever angle you want so you can slit along any uh, radial line okay that does not matter that will also give you a branch this is the principal branch okay now uh, so so what are the other branches see the other branches other branches are given by the principal branch plus a fixed multiple of 2 pi i okay other branches is equal to are are given by of log are given by uh, the principal branch plus 2 n pi i for fixed n okay. So in particular you know uh, here I have taken the arg the principal argument from minus pi to pi alright but then I can add 2 pi to it if I add 2 pi to it my principal argument will vary from pi to 3 pi that is another uh, branch of the argument that will give you another branch of the logarithm that branch of the logarithm will be this principal branch of the logarithm plus 2 pi i. So I have just added 2 pi okay and this is how you get every branch right from this uh, from one branch. Now uh, now the point is uh, we uh, wha uh, where does the idea of uh, Riemann surface come in the idea of a Riemann surface comes in uh, in the following nice way we want to think of all the branches as one function you want to think of uh, all the branches as giving one and only one function okay the the way to do it is of course they are not one and the same function they are different functions so the uh, the idea is that you modify the domain of the function okay you change the domain of the function instead of it being a slit plane you make a Riemann surface and on that Riemann surface you will get a function which on each piece uh, that is a designated subset of that Riemann surface you will get all these uh, branches on every piece. So how does one do it, it one does it in a very nice way see you have so, so let me explain so you have so let me let me draw like this this is a slit plane uh, and I will just I will just draw it like this and here I have log z a uh, log w okay and uh, what you must understand is uh, well uh, if you uh, if I if uh, then what I have next is well I have log w plus uh, plus 2 pi i 
this is another branch this is also defined on the slit plane okay this is uh, I have added 2 pi to it all right and and so on it can it continues in both directions all right. So, uh, what I should draw above will be something like this it will be log w minus 2 pi i that is another branch of the logarithm that again is going to come uh, that is going to be again uh, an analytic function on the slit plane. So, I have so many uh, copies of the slit plane and I have uh, for each copy I have a an inverse function which is given by a branch of the logarithm all the functions they all differ only by uh, inte integer multiples of 2 pi i okay. Now what I do is I do the following thing see I do a pasting construction and the pasting construction is like this you see if I look at log w and look at the imaginary part it is the argument you see the argument is negative here it is negative at these points that is just uh, that is on the negative real axis and below it it is negative and above it it is positive okay and uh, in the negative uh, in on the negative side uh, the values are close to uh, here the values are close to argument close to uh, minus pi okay and above uh, the argument uh, is close to uh, plus pi all right. Now look at this one look at this branch if you look at this branch the argument is going to now change from so I have added 2 pi so it is going to change from plus pi to plus 3 pi okay. So what will happen is here the argument is close to plus pi and of course it is lesser than plus pi okay uh, 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 it is it is uh, is close to plus pi and in not lesser than in fact greater than or equal to plus pi that is what it is because uh, I have added 2 pi to this okay and if you look at it above uh, if you look at points here the argument uh, is close to 3 pi and of course less than or equal to 3 pi uh, strictly less than 3 pi because it changes from minus 3 pi less than or equal to the argument of this branch strictly less than uh, I mean uh, uh, plus pi less than or equal to argument of this this branch strictly less than 3 pi okay. So below it is going to be close to plus pi and greater than or equal to plus pi and above it is going to be close to 3 pi but lesser than 3 pi alright and uh, now you look at these two uh, slit regions look at these two slit regions look at these two slit, slit regions uh, is anything bothering you uh, I, mean that one, I mean the negative axis is removed is it, it? I mean the argument uh, below that diagram will be strictly greater than plus by instead of instead of greater than equals Ah, you're you're right. I mean, if you if you think of it as removed, then I should write strictly greater than pi. If I if I if I think of it as removed, then I will write strictly greater than or equal to, uh, strictly greater than or equal to plus pi. Okay. But if I don't think of it as removed, then I write it like this. Okay. But I want to do the following thing. What I want to do is, I don't want to remove it because I want to paste it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do the following thing. Look at see, think of this piece. You you think of this piece like this. Okay. So uh, this is a piece of the complex plane uh, here the values of the argument are uh, greater than or equal to pi okay and above they are uh, 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 well going close to 3 pi 
but look you concentrate below here the values are greater than or equal to pi and that is these are the values which are uh, the values here the values here are argument is close to pi and strictly less than pi okay. So what you do is you see you you paste this uh, piece of the negative axis to that is the, the lower piece the lower this this slit plane you take the lower portion of the negative axis along with the negative axis and simply join it to the upper portion of uh, the uh, the portion above the negative real axis on this piece okay. So you know basically if I if I put them together uh, I, I hope I will be able to I wonder if I will be able to draw a neat diagram. So you know so just for the purpose of identification let me put uh, 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 let me put something here uh, so I am identifying I am pasting the lower thing here with the upper thing there so I will put plus here. and I will and I will put a minus here okay and so you know so so I am going to so so let me write this here so it is from here to here I am doing a paste okay why I am doing this pasting is because now if I paste these two slits together then as I move across the uh, negative real axis then the ar when I am on this piece the arguments uh, when I am uh, when I am on that piece the argument va the argument values are close to pi and lesser than pi and they are approaching pi but then after I paste it they will continue on this piece they will achieve the value pi and they will continue okay. So by pasting the upper portion of the uh, imaginary axis with the with the lower portion of the imaginary axis and the imaginary axis together what I have done is I have gotten a surface on which the argument seems to be continuous even on the negative real axis you see what is happening the argument has become now a continuous function including the points on the negative real axis just because I have cut the negative real axis the portion above the negative real axis from here away and I have joined the portion consisting of the negative real axis and the region below it to the portion of the negative real axis above okay. So and you know in fact in the uh, in the same way uh, what will happen is that you paste the uh, if, if you look at the uh, values of the argument here the values of the argument here are close to minus pi and of course and uh, uh, well uh, greater than or equal to minus pi that is what happens here alright. If you look at this okay I have taken away minus 2 pi so I will get uh, if I take away minus 2 pi from this I will get minus 3 pi to minus pi. So what will happen is here the uh, at, at these points below the negative real axis and on the negative real axis the argument will have values. Uh, close to uh, 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 minus 3 pi and of course greater than or equal to minus 3 pi this is what I get okay and what what will I have above I will have uh, uh, values uh, close to pi minus 2 pi which is minus pi and lesser than minus pi. So above I will have argument values close to uh, minus pi and lesser than minus pi okay and now you see uh, here if I take the top portion of the negative real axis the argument has values uh, uh, lesser than minus pi and tending to minus pi and those values are achieved here in the bottom portion of the negative real axis and the negative real axis 
the argument values start from minus pi and they increase. So, what you do is in the same way you paste this to this you make a paste like this ok. So, what you do is you take the uh, negative real axis and the lower portion of the negative real axis and paste it to the upper portion of the negative real the portion above the negative real axis in this piece ok and that is you see that is just uh, what you did uh, here ok. So, if you if you now look at this procedure what you are doing is for every piece what you are doing is you are taking the negative real axis and the portion below the negative real axis and you are pasting it to the piece uh, to the uh, portion of the negative uh, uh, to the portion above the negative real axis in the in the uh, uh, slit plane I mean in the in the in the sheet in the in the piece above ok. And you if you do this infinitely ok you can imagine it. Uh, so, let me let me draw uh, let me draw a diagram uh, it may not be the best diagram you know if I do this I will get uh, at any finite stage I will get something like this I will get something like a uh, uh, and of course you know the, the origin has been removed. So, there is a hole ok and you see I get I get something like a spiral uh, continuously sp spiral staircase kind of thing alright and so I get a surface and of this surface will of course if I if I do this if I do this uh, uh, of course you know I have I have drawn a boundary here there is no boundary ok. In fact I should put dotted lines because this is this is just uh, 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 this is a whole plane here there is no boundary but you know I am just drawing it so that you can uh, you can visualize it it is a little hard to visualize but you, but with a little bit of thought you can ok. So, you, you what you get is you get you know uh, copies upon copies of the plane ok being cut and joined on the negative real axis ok with the origin removed and you get a surface. Now, this surface is a Riemann surface why because what is our definition of Riemann surface a Riemann surface is something that should be locally homeomorphic to the plane it should have a it should be as a topological space it should be you know connected it should be Hausdorff it should be second countable of course all these things are true uh, the way I have pasted it is going to be connected it is going to be of course Hausdorff because you take two points uh, I can separate them by open sets if they lie on the same uh, piece of the uh, uh, cut plane then I can certainly separate them by two open sets if they lie on different pieces ok which are called. So, these various pieces of the uh, of this of the plane the cut plane they are all called as sheets of the Riemann surface ok. So, you have infinitely many sheets as many sh sheets as there are integers ok because you have all the uh, you have as many uh, branches of the logarithm as there are integers and every uh, it is only by choosing an integer n that you get a different branch of the logarithm from the principal branch by adding 2 n pi i to it ok. So, you get this th this thing is certainly a Riemann surface ok it is a Riemann surface uh, it is connected house of second countable and uh, certainly I can make sense of uh, uh, th there are uh, uh, natural charts because each piece is uh, just uh, the slit plane. So, I can uh, define uh, and, and, and the way I have defined the uh, the way I have cut and paste it the argument becomes a continuous function. So, what you must understand is now you see if I I can write a r g z a r g w this is a this is a continuous function argument is a continuous function argument which was originally not a continuous function on on a single copy has now become a continuous function that is because I have carefully cut and paste various copies. So, this this argument which is a multiple valued function which is not continuous I have cut and paste the domain so many copies of the domain. So, that I get uh, a function which puts together all these branches of the argument function. So, you know therefore, argument function is a continuous function on this 
and beautiful thing is the log function will also be a continuous function on this and it will be analytic on each piece it will give you a branch of the logarithm corresponding to that piece ok. So, the beautiful thing is that you know uh, so the so the and then you know I have I can I can write a projection here on to the uh, uh, w plane ok and you know now uh, you know from the the z plane to the w plane I have the function e power z alright I have this uh, of course when I project it the origin will be missed the origin will not be there <coughs> because the origin has been removed right. So, look at this diagram I have the exponential function if I try to define the inverse function I do not get it here but I get it above I get it on a Riemann surface which sits so which projects on to this. So, this is called the Riemann surface of log log z ok this is called the Riemann surface of log z. Uh, let me let me put small l I will put small l because it says it is now a single valued uh, analytic function on this Riemann surface it is analytic because analytic is local and if I want to check analytic on every sheet I know it is already analytic on each sheet. So, it is an analytic function ok. So, it is a single valued analytic function it is inverse for this function. So, the beautiful thing is here is a function which is a many valued function ok the inverse you do not get from the target you get on a Riemann surface that covers the target. In fact uh, uh, this map uh, in the language of uh, a covering spaces is called a covering map this is a covering map it is a it is called an infinite sheeted covering of the punctured plane ok and uh, the moral of the story is if you try to look at the inverse to a function you will get so many branches and the if you want to think of the inverse as really a function you have to go to a the Riemann surface of the inverse function there it will be a honest analytic function which will be an inverse to this ok. So, this is the picture. So, uh, this is one of the nice things about Riemann surfaces they allow you to think of uh, uh, various branches of an inverse function. Uh, as a single function on a surface ok alright. So, I will stop here and we continue in the next lecture. <coughs>